In our last video, a longtime viewer of the channel sent me a very generous package full of modern computer parts. He sent me two really powerful video cards, 24 gigs of RAM for the main computer, a bunch of SSDs, uh, two Western Digital Velociraptor 1 terabyte hard drives, which I'm now using for the storage drives in the main PC. And he sent this Intel Xeon E5645 CPU, a 2.4 gigahertz hexacore CPU. And in today's video, I'm going to test this CPU and see if it's faster than the Core i7-950 that I'm currently running in this machine, which is a quad core 3 gigahertz unit, which I have overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz. Now, more cores is always better, but with the slower clock speed, it might not actually equal better performance for the particular things I do. Whether more clock speed or more cores is better is greatly dependent on what you do with your computer. So I've got a test in mind. Uh, what's the thing that I do most on my computer that's really CPU intensive? I edit video and I render video. And when you're rendering video, uh, the more CPU power you can get, the better. So I use Vegas Pro as my video editor. And as a test, I've rendered the first minute of the previous video. And it took 1 minute and 47 seconds to render 1 minute of video. So that's going to be my deciding factor, uh, factor when we put this Xeon in. Is it going to be able to render the same minute of video in less time than a minute 47? We'll find out. But first of all, we got to get this CPU in, uh, which means I've got to shut the thing, shut this thing down, and take the cooler off. And I'm not sure. I might have to remove the motherboard to get the cooler off. I forget if that's. I forget because. It was quite a pain in the butt to get the cooler on there, so I'm not I'm not too thrilled at having to take it off again. That uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, um, but we'll see, and we'll do it in the name of science. Well, while it appears it should be possible to take the uh, cooler off without removing the motherboard. I was dumb and did it the wrong way and ended up having to remove the motherboard, so oops. So I'll sort this mess out, clean off the old heatsink compound. I have more so I can put a new dab on there, get the new CPU on there, put the cooler back on, and put this mess back together and then we'll see how it works. Okay, that was a much longer and more involved process than I wished for. It's like an hour later. Uh, Xeon's in. Let's see if this garbage works. If it doesn't, I may cry and poop my pants. No beeps. Oh, I never reset my overclock. I wonder if that'll be an issue. Oh, that's good. Oh, thank goodness. All right, so let's see what we got here. It does detect the Xeon. I gotta close this curtain. New CPU installed. Please enter setup. Yeah, okay. There it is, Xeon E5645, 2.4 gigahertz. Currently running at 2.5 gigahertz. Uh. Oh, my overclock, <laughs> my overclock's still in effect. Well, you know what? It did lower the CPU uh, multiplier, but let's bump that back up just for funsies. Uh, I don't know, let's, let's try. I think I had it at 21 before, so. Oh, ooh, is that as high as it's gonna go? Ah, oh, is this thing locked from uh, overclocking? Oh, that sucks. Okay, I just had a scary, unexpected problem. I noticed this thing sounded way quieter than usual, which made no sense. 
and the CPU fan was running and the C and the GPU fans were running. I look at the power supply fan, the freaking fan seized on the power supply. What the heck? That power supply has been running perfectly and now all of a sudden the fan is seized. Oh my goodness, either that or something's blocking it. I'll have to check it out. Well, all I did was turn the computer back on and the power supply fan is running fine again. So I don't know what happened. I don't know if I... I don't know. I have no clue why it, I looked and it's just stalled. And then I turned the computer back on and it's running fine again. But that was scary. I am glad that I discovered that because I don't think I can afford to lose this 1200 watt power supply. I don't think I can afford another one that's powerful enough to run this computer. Maybe. Probably a 600 would do, but I don't know and I'd rather not find out. So back to our original issue, it appears this CPU has a locked multiplier, which sucks. But I did the calculations. 19 times 181 should be 3.4 gigahertz. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Uh... Maybe it's throttling back. I mean, speed steps disabled. Uh, is the Intel Turbo Boost or whatever it's called enabled? Uh, oh, over here it says 3.4 gigahertz. Well, what the heck? Why was it showing 2.5 on post? Let it, let's just reboot and see what it says. Oh, now it says 3.4. Never mind. It must have it must have initially uh set itself to uh set itself to the stock clock. Damn, 3.4 gigahertz. So this thing has a chance of being way faster. I hope it is because I really 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 don't want to have to uh I really don't want to have to put uh, take the motherboard out and the heat sink out and put that i7 back in and this says we're running at 3.2 gigahertz and it seems to go between 3.15 and 3.3 so i don't know what's going on it, it must be it must be the it must only turbo up to 3.4 or something i forget what the i7 did but for some reason i thought it ran at the fastest speed all the time it's running super cool which I like. Way cooler than the i7 was running. That might just be because of the lower clock speed. But uh, let's let's see, let's, let's run some tests and see how much faster it is. Uh, I'll start with Passmark Performance Test and I'll run a full suite of tests on here because we also have the new RAM to account for and stuff like that. So we'll see how it scores. This is a score to beat with a CPU score of 3,874. Alright, so our main score increased from 2,275 to 2,471. Our CPU mark almost doubled from 3,874 to 7,154. Wow. From the 21st percentile to the 47th percentile. But everything else lowered, which is probably because we've lost half a gigahertz in CPU clock speed. But they only lowered slightly. But now, here comes the real test. As we mentioned earlier in the video, I rendered the first minute of the previous video on this channel. And it rendered that one minute of video in one minute 47 seconds. So will it render that one minute of video faster? Let's find out. Hey yo, I just got the blue screen of death. I don't know why. Might not like how far it's overclocked. I'll let it boot back up and then we'll we'll try it again. Alright, it's a few days later. I needed to take some time and play around with all the overclock settings and uh, see what I could do um, about salt first of all uh, solving that BSOD which was done very easily I just had to bump up the RAM voltage from its stock voltage and then I just played around to see uh, how fast I could get this CPU to go 
Now remember, this is a 2.4 gigahertz CPU stock. How did I do? How about 4 gigahertz? I am not kidding. Uh, we've got a base of 3.87 gigahertz and it turbos up to almost 4.1 gigahertz. I have never had a computer with a CPU that fast of a clock speed and that's like a 75% increase in clock speed. That's amazing. This CPU really won the silicon lottery. 2.4 gigahertz overclocked to almost 4.1. As a matter of fact, I almost got it to 4.2, but it wasn't stable. But I've been using it clocked like this for the last uh, few days, and it seems to be running perfectly stable. And boy, is it fast. Uh, it was 100% a good idea to put in this CPU. You may recall uh, with the i7 overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz, the time required to render one minute of video, uh, in the type of video I upload on YouTube, it was like a minute 46 seconds or something like that. Uh, with this CPU uh, overclocked to where it's at now, that's down to a minute 13. That's like more than 30 seconds shaved off of the render time for one minute of video. That's pretty significant. That's pretty darn awesome. So yeah, this CPU in its overclocked form is way faster than the i7 was. And I'll show you once again. 2.4 gigahertz stock, overclocked to almost 3.9 gigahertz. And if I put a load on it here, just scroll through the web browser here. Look at that, 4.05 gigahertz. So how about Passmark? Uh, how did our Passmark score change? Well, I'll remind you, these were the scores that we had. Let's see how it stacks up now. Ooh, that's a big jump in the overall score. And take a look at the CPU score. We're up over 8,000. And look at that! The bar is green. I didn't know there even was a green bar. I've never had a computer that had anything other than orange bars for the little, uh, little percentile meter things. Wow. Our 2D graphics improved, but our 3D graphics is overall slower than it was when the i7 was in. I don't know if that's some sort of optimization that was lost to the Xeon over the i7 or if my overclock is making something else run less optimally. I don't know. Our memory mark went up and our disk mark just barely went up. So yeah, the, the loss, the, the small decrease in the 3D graphics score disappoints me a little bit. Not, not that it matters, because even with that GTX 770, there's more than enough graphics power for what I do on this. And once I get a DVI-D to VGA converter, I do have one coming in the mail now, I can put that Radeon R9 390X in there, and that'll be another video to see how that card works. So that should be pretty interesting too. And I can't imagine ever, running, <laughs> ever uh, wanting more graphics power than what that thing can put out. So there you go, a Core i7-950 replaced with a Xeon E5645 on a 10-year-old Asus P6T motherboard. Uh, definitely a worthwhile upgrade, way more speed, especially if you can get a decent overclock out of it. And it's made this computer even more of a beast than it already was. So I have to thank 93 Shadow once again. He's the one who sent me this CPU and the many other awesome things that were in that package we opened up in the last video. Until then, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.